What is up guys and welcome back to another episode of the My Player Career Mode. As I said in the earlier upload of today, which was the last Palmas Career Mode, if you haven't already watched it, go ahead and watch that video. It was a really good one. I left you guys with a decision to make regarding two new signings to the team, whether or not we go for A or B. So you guys have the choice to make over on that video. So if you haven't already watched it, like I said, go back and watch that one. But like I said in that one, um, I'm actually going to be away all tomorrow, which is when, when this goes live, it's Friday. So on Saturday, I'm going to be actually away from my computer, from away from my Xbox for all of the day. I'm actually going somewhere. Um, and so it means that I won't unfortunately be around to be able to record and get some videos out, which means it may not be a double upload tomorrow. We'll just have to play it by ear and see what happens regarding that. So hopefully you understand, and if you do, of course, you guys normally do because you're all amazing and all the support you give me is sensational. And uh, so yeah, that'll be the reason being, if anything goes wrong tomorrow and there's only one upload. And I wanted to get you guys, or I wanted to give you guys, I guess, um, the, not, the heads up really, just to basically explain that and just let you guys know what's going on. So yeah, I like to do that, I like to keep you in the mix, and so you'll be able to tell exactly what is going on. But today, guys, we've got three games to come. We have Bilbao first, then we take on... Um, I think it's Nastic, is it, the other team they're called? They're actually the side that gave us our first defeat here at Real Madrid in our first ever game for Real Madrid. So we're taking them on. It's uh, it's time for revenge. It's time for revenge to take them on and try and beat them. So that'll be interesting to see. And then I think we end the episode off with a game against Espanyol. So it's three, I guess, not really that interesting games, but certainly games in which I think we'll be able to get victories in all three today. We'll have to wait and see. So four minutes onto the clock here in this game against Bilbao. I stole the ball back here. I should have, in hindsight, laid that across the face of the goal. I just decided to shoot instead because it wasn't really too much on after that. And I'm going to tell you right now, there was a lot of chances in this game up against Bilbao today. There were a lot. So we're going to go through them thick and fast here. 17 minutes on the clock. Nice cut back from Brandt. I had no other option to strike it first time. I thought I was going to get a little bit lucky there as it hit the defender and looked as if he's going to cross the line. But he got back in time to clear it, unfortunately. And then we hit the post. So, yeah, early part of this one. Very much in our favour. We had a lot of the play. Bilbao was struggling to keep us uh, keep us down and we're really struggling to get us out of their half. And then from this corner, we counter-attacked here. Two-on-two -two situation. And then to make it even worse for them, James Rodriguez joins it in a three-on-two. Gave the ball off to him here. He's on the right-hand side. Acres of space. You see that touch there? No idea. Why did he take it further away from goal onto his weaker right foot when he had so much space to run into. That's exactly what I mean about the AI's decision making. It is shocking. We should have been leading here. And it was just frustrating as Bilbao did have a chance right on the end of the first half there. As he struck one goalwards, but it was over the bar. The first chance and the first game, or the first goal, sorry, of this second half did come to us. 47 minutes on the clock. He cut back from Brandt from the left-hand side. Gave me it in the area, I took one touch to set myself and then another to curl it into the top corner past the goalkeeper to make it Athletic Bilbao nil, Real Madrid won as the other boys there celebrate with me. But in all honesty, like I said, we should have already been leading. You know, James Rodriguez's chance is a lot easier than it should have been. I have no idea why he took the extra touch out wide as he did. He did not need to do it. He was in on goal. All he had to do was continue running the way he was and he would have been in a one-on-one -on -one situation and should score. So I can't understand it and no words for what he did. Shocking decision making and we only won the game by a goal to nil. So it's still nice, as I said, to get that win. And it's, of course, very important we get three points because we're still chasing the lead title here. Although we're massively out in front, we can't really count too much just yet because there's a long way to go in terms of points to be taken. And although we're not losing many games, I am going to kind of play about in terms of the difficulty over the next few episodes, just to try and get you guys some entertaining gameplay. I mean, that one there was very one-sided. By the way, we're playing on World Class for this episode. So that one was very one-sided. But when we took on the Nastic here, oh, I've probably butchered that, I apologise if I have, but when we took them on, I had flashbacks. I had flashbacks to the first time we played in a Real Madrid shirt and we lost here 2-0. We ended up losing at their ground 2-0. The man on your screen there was the man who scored both of those goals. So their striker has got a very good record against us so far at my time here at Real Madrid. He's played once and he scored twice. So what's she betting, guys? He's going to get another goal today. You'll have to wait and see. The Santiago Bernabeu was the stage for today's game. You can see they're sat in 11th place going into this. We're top of the table. So by all means... I'm going to say it, this should be a comfortable game for us. We should be picking up three points from this one. But as you all know, the first time Rami played against them, we ended up losing 2-0. And that was two of the three goals we have conceded all season long. That's crazy. We've conceded three, two of them coming against Nastic in that game that they beat us. So we can't really count too much just yet. 
Although I would like to say that this should be a very, very simple affair and I should have a lot of chances coming my way. Until we get into the game, until we see the setup that they're going to go with, I won't actually know for you guys. So we'll see what happens. I think that was the guy there at number 30 who scored against us twice. Yes, it was. Um, Emana, he goes by the name of. So they're playing a 4-4-2 in this one. Should be interesting. I feel as though we've got the quality to be able to bring this one home. Although we already lost to them once, I still think that this is going to be us as favourites. Of course it is. We're top of the table. We're miles out in front. We're demolishing everyone. Of course we'll be favourites going into this one. Um, and actually, the first chance did fall our way. 20-something minutes onto the clock now. Hector Bellerin, nice ball inside. And our centre midfielder on the day smashes one goalwards. Keep makes it a good save, but he can't quite keep enough behind it to keep the ball out of the back of the net. So Lucas Toro here makes it Real Madrid 1, Nastic 0. And honestly, guys, I felt as though from this stage now, we would go on to just smash them. You know, they've now got to come forward. They've got to attack. They've got to try and get themselves back in the game. Or they go for damage limitation and try and not concede as much as possible. So, in that sense, you know, this should create some chances. We should be able to get ourselves a few more chances on the board. And they should be committing men forward. And you all know how much I like it when the AI go on to attack him. Because it leaves them so vulnerable at the back. And so, I feel as though if they go into that... We'll have a happy days up front. So we'll see what happens in the last sort of kind of last bit of the first half and into the second half. And it was actually them with the next chance. 31 minutes on the clock. It falls here in the penalty area. No idea why we didn't clear this. It's actually a mana with the strike causing us all sorts of problems yet again. It hits our defender, bounces over the top of him via a deflection, goes in. So in the space of five or six minutes, we'd gone from leading the game 1-0 to uh, drawing 1-1. And yet again... It was that man, Amana, with the uh, with the kind of finish. I'm not sure if he got credit with it because I don't know if it was on target from this one. It takes a massive deflection on the way through and that is why it ends up in the back of the net. No idea what Navas is doing. He's a mug. I'm a mug. Everybody's a mug. And that was, once again, Amana's third goal in two games up against us. So it made it 1-1 here and I'm sick to death of having that happen to us. Conceding three goals all series and then that's the way we're going to concede the equaliser. It is shocking. 86 minutes on the clock. And you can just basically write this, guys. You can write this seriously. I just, uh, when this went into the corner here, I was thinking, I remember saying to myself, yeah, this is definitely going to happen. Ball gets whipped in. It's not cleared by us. It comes to their centre back of all people. And he smashes one top bins. Two minutes to go from time. Real Madrid one, Nastic two, at home, at the Santiago Bernabeu. I honestly didn't know what to say. Like, I was sat there saying, of course it has. I was saying, of course, this is going to go in, and of course it did. So it just pretty much summed up an, a poor day. It was shocking for me. I could not get in the game. You saw me play at like a 5.6 match rating. So honestly, my performance wasn't good enough. But then again, none of the performances in that Real Madrid lineup today were good enough. We were dominated. And the problem there is, I speak to you previously. I mean, look at the match facts. We had one shot, and it came right in the 23rd minute. So from that stage, when you won the up in a game up against an 11th place team... You can't go on to lose that 2-1 in my opinion. So there's, it's, it's inexcusable. No excuses for what happened there other than we had a shocker and they deserve to pick up the three points. I can't complain. I can't say any different. For the second time we've been defeated by Nastic and for the uh, third time in two games, Amana has scored against us. So me, personally, my performance against them, I've scored zero in two and a man that would cost significantly less than us here to get them to Real Madrid has scored three in two against us. So he has a gift for scoring against us in this series and I was frustrated and I didn't know what to do from that one. So we went into the game straight after that. Because um, the best way to untilt yourself is to play again, if you will. So I felt as though, once again, another home game here up against Espanyol this time. It can't go wrong for a second time at home. We cannot do it, guys. We can't go one nil up again and lose it. It's just not possible. So that's what I felt anyways. Because, you know, I uh, felt from when we went one nil up in that one that we were going to go on to win it. And also... They have handed us two defeats. Our only two defeats all season long have come at the hands of Nastic, which is going to be frustrating. It seems as though they're going to be my bogey team, guys. And it's, it's, yeah, I honestly wasn't happy. You can probably tell by my voice. I'm still not happy now about losing that game to them there. But if it means we're still going to secure the league title, I ain't going to be complaining by the back end of the year. I will not complain any, by any stretch of the imagination if we can secure that league title, regardless of however many defeats we do it with. Not bothered. So as long as we get the win... That's all that matters here. So Espanyol are the next opponent. 20 minutes on the clock for this one. Ball gets played into me. Give it off to the right-hand side here to Lucas Vazquez. And he makes no mistake in making the score. Real Madrid 1, Espanyol. Very, oh, Espanyol nil, sorry. Very similar time, actually, to the opening goal up against Nastic. So in that sense, if, uh, if you want to play a repeat of that game, then this is the way to do it. So we took the lead again. 22 minutes on the clock. So one minute earlier than we did in the last one. 
And if this game is our last game is anything to go by, this game is going to be very, very interesting. So hopefully we learn from our mistakes of last game. Don't get too cocky and actually can uh, keep the league going here and get ourselves a second one. I went down the right hand side, 35 minutes on the clock now. Cut it back onto the left foot here, get inside of another man. And then eventually, there's a lot of players in the box here, but they just didn't close me down. So I continued the run, got to the center of the box and curled one into the top bins fantastically. So Real Madrid 2, Espanyol 0, 35 minutes on the clock now. In many ways, we did learn from our mistakes. We added a second to it, and that's all we needed to do against Nastic. But if you don't get the chance to, then you can't. And in many ways as well, I spoke about me playing at a 5.6, but you have to say we created one chance in that game against them, and we scored it. So I actually didn't have the service that I was looking for. You can say it was personally a poor performance from me, but, you know, my team as well, they have to take a lot of the blame because they didn't give too much service to me. So, you know, I can only, uh, I can only deal with what I'm getting given unless I want to just run it from the center circle halfway line, but... Not always a possible thing to do that, as we did go on to win the game there up against Espanyol by two goals to nil. So in the end, it ends off a very interesting episode. Two wins and a single defeat. The single defeat coming yet again at the hands of Nastic. And I am not really too happy about it, as you can probably tell. But I'm sure we'll probably fall to many more defeats in this series to come. So we just have to uh, kind of brush it off and keep moving forward in this one. You can see the league table right now as we end the episode off. Barcelona currently all the way down in second place. Um, I say it like it's a massive thing, but they are a massive amount of points behind us. 20, oh no, sorry, 14 behind us at this stage currently. And that's a lot, you know, going into the last kind of nine games or so. To be 14 points behind, it's not a very, very easy thing to do. However, they do have a game in hand, so there's potential for that to go to 11. So we'll see what happens in that one. I'm not quite sure who their game in hand is against, so I'm sure they'll get a victory in that one and they'll close the gap a little bit more. But I feel confident we're going to go on to win the league title. And also, guys, we are currently under a one goal to game ratio. We've also got Goal contributions, though, and we are over one per game, so that's pretty good to see. And for the first time ever, I'm on the red card list, so that's very interesting. But other than that, we are coming towards the back end of the episode. If you have enjoyed it, I'd appreciate a like rating. As always, guys, thank you for your continued support on the channel, and I will catch you all with another video very soon. Stay tuned. Adios!